No, I mean, viewers out there, I don't think anybody's on yet. Hey, bud. It's been my mouth. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a good thing uh, J-Rob wasn't here to hear you say you had something in your mouth. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, all right. I'm killing me for a little bit. Uh, we're dinking around here with uh, trying to get people to be able to see tokens. Oh, okay. And whatnot. So let me get. As soon as you get back on the table, I'll add you back to the combat tracker in the party sheet. He broke something. Yeah, I actually, well, I actually broke it intentionally earlier. Well, it all had to do with I had removed all the tokens from the host and the shared folder um, because of a module I've been working on for 48 days, I think. So, oh, the, uh, the, the, the Greek one? Odyssey, yeah. Yeah, Odyssey. And so I removed all those tokens and forgot to put them back in before I fired this table up so nobody had any tokens and blah blah is a chain chain of events. A series of unfortunate events. Uh -huh. Hey, I can see everyone's token now. That might be worth playing with. And I see everybody's token on the map now, so maybe you just need to reboot, not reboot, but just go recon back up. Yeah, get push some fresh juice. All right, I need to cup cup off my my fluids. Oh. I wish they separated out the spells better for this. It's a real pain in the ass to navigate. Well, I think personally on the spell listing, they should have a, at least a few extra fields. Oh, that's what I mean. I've got to like find a list somewhere for the mad scientist, and it's not very easy to get to. And then it just kind of gives you a list that's in alphabetical order, not right. by rank. And then I've got to go I... into the rank, read through all the spells, find one I kind of like so I can turn around and be like, oh, well, I don't have that one. Okay. All right, so I think I need to know what I need to do. I might not take that badge because of that. Oh, uh, how do uh, learning new spells work? Uh, uh, uh. There's an edge that's called more powers. And I think you have to take that each time you want a new power. Yep, it was a two. Okay, so you don't get one for ever so many levels. Not to my knowledge, unless um, your arcane background somehow says that you do for whatever reason. They, they all pretty much do the more powers. And there's actually two different edges. So you have to either buy more powers or more power points. The only one that kind of gets around this is the mad scientist. Because if I get a new power, I get new power points to go with it. And an insanity. Dre. Yes, and an insanity. <laughs> 101. I had, to bump, I had to bump Jingo out of the... <laughs> I couldn't stand to see Jingo's name up there. Uh, well, if he comes in there, he's going to want to be number one, too, and it's only going to cost him one biddy right right uh so um did you guys pick up what i had said over in uh, discord chat about the fourth use for uh fate chips that i'm taking from yeah Jango's yeah we book? can add holy shit i with my i with my poppy with here to help us yeah it's uh i, I really like that Venno, remember when we did the three musketeers thing and uh and I threw a, a fate ship out there and said that, oh, I know this lady here, and she's going to help us out and go keep the soldiers distracted. And it, it was great. So, you know, we'll, it's kind of like the cards, I guess, the adventure cards. But 
Eh, sort of. I used a, a Benny in my other Savage Worlds game to say that there was a CB radio in the car. <laughs> and of course, like, later that session, the car pretty much got destroyed. <laughs> uh, had to destroy the car. All but the CB radio, I would have said, got destroyed. <laughs> skittering down the highway the road sh- 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 well i mean it wasn't like in pieces or anything but it was pretty damn beat up and it would have taken some sort of master mechanic and a hell of a exploding dice to fix it all right so i've got you guys back on a map can you see yourselves Well, there's, uh, yes, yes, I can see everybody. Yes. See, I heard a C. Yeah. Wow, the, look at all the different levels of cover. There's four levels of cover. There's, I don't, I'm not too scared. There's, oh shit, oh, there's, oh my God, and there's, holy crap. Really? Light, medium, heavy, and near total. I'm seeing green squares yeah, yeah, where the tokens are. Disco recon, kind of J Rob. I uh, had removed uh, all the tokens out of the tokens folder yeah, earlier to fix another problem that I was having. I forgot to put them back in there when I fired the table up. So if you disconnect from the table and then jump back on it, everything will show back up for you. Okay. Apparently, if he puts tokens on the table after players disconnect, it doesn't push them to them. And we think we learned that just now. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe we can get some other people interested in Deadlands and Savage Worlds and get some, get some, uh, some coder love here. Since Doug Davidson's such a big, uh, Deadlands fan, I'd think that he'd uh, give it some. Well, he doesn't have the time. He, he does have two. Time. He does have two rule set uh, developers now, though. So yeah, yeah. As soon as Unity gets launched and they're on the upswing of Unity, then rule sets are going to get lots of love. Good. And I'm sure Savage World's on the list, Good. Up top somewhere. I hope so. Yeah, I'd imagine Five E is at the very top. Yes, and Diablo when we Bob. get yeah. that's a hint, Diablo. And Bob. when we get when we get rid of classic, then everything can focus on Unity and not have to do everything twice. Well, I can say this: once we have the Swade, um, we're, we're in Swade. Once Deadland comes out for the Swade edition. Uh, Let's just say that strings have been pulled and we may have uh, some backers. Do what? For third-party development? Oh, uh, no. Like, for first-party development from Peg Inc. Oh, oh really? nice. That would be nice. Pinnacle. Gets I mean, this isn't a, this isn't a bare-bones game though i mean somebody's put some time in it oh, yeah. i mean there's a lot well did you see what oh, yeah, would... bob said over here in uh stream chat said he's working on of course it is. nice he's the so, one-handed multiple task encoder so one of the things that i can say is um i've been in constant contact with them uh i had said something earlier and i know i didn't do it on stream but uh i've been in contact with them they have given us permission to use their uh, their portraits and everything. Like anything that that's on them, we can stream with them. They've given us permission for that, and they're once they are ready for the suede things, they're they're currently play testing stuff, and they're um, they just want me to get in contact with them again, and they're gonna start pushing out new new content. And if the stream goes well, they, they're going to consider giving us um, the playtest stuff that they're working on so that we can 
uh, uh, display some of it. Oh, no shit. That'd be nice. Yeah, little adventures and stuff. Well, uh, yeah, like first dibs on pre-made adventures, uh, pre pre things like a new new arcane backgrounds as they come out. That's right. by the way, that reminds me, arcane backgrounds. Uh, Vino. Yes, I've got. Um, you'll probably have to load it. Uh, the flood on the table, which gives the uh, huckster arcane background so it's everything you needed that you said you know it wasn't there but you could kind of make it anyway build it out anyway it's there now should be so oh. well what i originally wanted to go was a hex slinger but that was an option because you didn't have the edges and whatnot that went with it well that may be there hex slinger and huckster's the same thing so you might want to check Well, they're that. both magic. They're both magic backgrounds, yes, but they use magic differently. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've read some I Kale's uh, uh, post Diablo uh, over on FG. But yeah, I'd like to get like, you know, I doubt the Lux Oz will ever. He may not be into Savage Worlds rule set. Get his. Uh, core thing working with the sounds but maybe somebody could pick that up and take a look at what he's done and make maybe get it to work but anyway so uh did you guys all read the message of the day i think so yeah i read it it said stuff like Rewind, rewind stuff. Yeah, rewind stuff. Yeah. So, uh, so, basically, I'll give the stream a rundown. After incapacit incapacitating, what the hell? I gotta learn how to spell. After incapacitating the small number of Union guards outside Greyjoy Street Prison, the posse entered, began a quick search for the prisoner. Finding the commander's home empty, the posse passed deeper into the compound, leaving Jenthro to guard the front and only door. Uh, the two Indians, finding themselves for the first time in an extravagant domicile, uh, commenced to relieving the Union commander of food, silverware, and personal items of several officers quartered within. Timmons, Jeb, and H.G. went with Grimes through the bell tower and into the prison where they encountered a Union sergeant and some grunt guards. They easily subdued them, though Simmons' underhanded club blow to the cojones of one prison guard will surely put an end to that man's family tree. Hope, hopefully he has a brother. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that, that one hurt his ass, his whole family. His brother his brothers don't have no enough now either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he hit him so hard, none of his family got enough. Uh, H.G. and Grimes located the prisoner Sam Craig in a basement shackled to a 12-pounder. H.G. made quick work of the old lock, and together they uh, assisted the emaciated uh, prisoner upstairs and toward the exit. Jinthro locked the front door after hearing voices from approaching officers. Two of the three officers headed toward the eastern entrance through the barracks, leaving the third standing outside the door alone. Hearing the posse, posse returning with the prisoner, Jinthro threw open the door and disabled the officer, <clears throat> throwing him from the stone porch. Posse made their way out onto 8th Street, headed for a tavern, and presumed safety just over the River du Pere. Through the window beside you, you can see flames licking up the walls on the inside of the uh, entry foyer, where Jinthro took a lantern. And you guys can hear the glass shatter and that sudden sound of, of fire consuming and sucking oxygen as you came down off these steps and back out onto the street. And you guys are on the street right now, and the building is burning, starting to burn behind you. You can hear voices shouting to the north, to the east. And unless there's anything you guys want to do, we're going to we're going to GM fast forward here for a bit. Is there anything anybody wanted to do? But I'm going to sing the prison, the prison, the prison's on fire. We don't need <laughs> no water. Let the... This is an adult. Of... <laughs> That's copyright infringement. 
<laughs> I didn't. I didn't see anything in it. I only found the first one. <laughs> um, I so do have a question. Is... Can we enter things onto the calendar? Uh, I don't think FG works that way. I I could put uh, things on there for you. But I can, I've never been so, able to enter anything on, like, player notes on any calendar. So it's Friday the 0th, uh, 1848. Uh, what the hell? No. It should be November 12th. <laughs> it's November 12th. Yeah. It does say Friday 0th. Also, keeping in track with the stuff that's been going on, the cameras aren't on the, the Twitch either. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. What the? Hey, Barbania. What the heck happened here? What? You got, you got, a, you got a pack of matches? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Set my damn old Set office damn... on fire here. Get the hell out. <laughs> Say, we're done. Um, no, when your hands are full, someone always asks you for a match. Yeah, oh, shit. But here's the funny thing. I don't see... VC's not even showing up here. So that's HG. There it is. Boom. You got a couple of loose screens popping in on the stream. There, okay. There's me. I'm down here in Jethro. I'm being Jethro today. Jethro. <laughs> I knew Jethro. Oh. I knew Jethro. Genthro. Genthro. That's what I meant. There we go. The sleeping dog. There we go. But I don't know why Darren's camera is suddenly. Darren? I said it again, didn't I? Darren. Be hard okay. to shake them old character names. Hello, doggy. Hello, doggy. No, his camera seems all right to me. It's covering up the top of his name a little bit. There we go. Oh. Cool. We should be good. We should be good. This is the left side of the screen. The right side of the screen is a shy bunch of mofos. Just, yeah. just giving the, the stream some clout with the doggos. All right. Come here. Come on. Come say hi. Yeah. Well, it seems like the lighting's pretty bad right now on mine. Now, when you're right in front of it, the monitor will reflect on your face uh, a little bit. I, can't, I got chroma cam on, so I'll, if I move the camera, all you see is a chroma. All right, so uh, if there's, so if did there's somebody say there's something they wanted to do? Did I miss something here before mm. shit wasn't working? I, no, I think uh, we were going to play with the camera, but or the calendar, but uh, I think you're right. I don't know how players can enter anything onto the calendar, so that becomes the DM's responsibility, which is a crock. It is a crock. The bloody players should be able to keep track of their own time. Right, so break in, break out of ten. So you guys can read that though on the calendar, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can click on your your little point you made. Wait, let me see if I can double click on. Yeah, see if I click on. I can only click view log entry, and there's no way to add. Well, there's a, there's a button that says add log log entry, but it doesn't do anything. Oh, I don't even have that button. I said all logs and view logs. Oh, I got. Well, if you click on another date, oh, like date, but it doesn't allow you to actually. Maybe do there's a permission that could get turned on. I don't know. I've never got it to work even oh. over on five E. So. I you know I never really got deep into it, but there should be a class or something somewhere. I use the heck out of it for like anybody who uses a calendar. Any DM that uses a calendar in their games and they post the date like I do, I can grab that date and drag it to a note, ta uh, you know, entry 
real quick, and I keep like a running journal. Benno's seen my journal on his table Benno's before. Seen. And I kind of write my notes as if I'm keeping a journal. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing for this character. All right, guys. So if you don't want to do anything right at this moment, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of do some fast forward. If you remember, the plan was to get him out of here, and if you could make it uh, west and south and get across the river to pair that uh, you were basically home free. And as you come well, out, well, between of, yeah, go ahead. there and the river, the only thing we're gonna do is get this guy some food from a from a hot dog stand or something on the way hot dogs i know he's starving it's something that, you know a, a right. taco truck we're in st louis i don't know what they have in st louis well you do go by several you know street markets and stuff and where they've got things covered up for the night but it's basically theft if you take it but there's not a lot of people around it's no, still early in the evening uh but you find some uh, uh but you find some some markets along the way where you could buy some shit yeah, so we just grab, you know, a couple bucks worth of food for him. Okay. And I'll pull it off my sheet. Okay, that's fine. You know, turkey let, you know, just grab shit and Meat go. shank. Can I, yeah. Can I get a meat shank to go? So you guys do that, and on the way, you, you make it there no problem. And, you know, you get a block or two away from the prison, and you can hear all hell breaking loose behind you. Uh, the town is obviously busy yeah, enough right now to really worry too bad about, you know, what's going on with you guys. But you make your way west, and, you know, after about 20 minutes or so, you start coming out of the neighborhoods into some more rural uh, settings. And uh, did you guys, you guys took the trolley here, but somebody rode a horse. Or somebody walked or something. Yeah, a little beaver and Paloma did. Yep. You guys walked or rode your horses? Rode the horses there. Yep. Okay, so you at least got two horses with you. Well, oh, I think Timmons is going to go get Jib and Jab in his wagon. So you're heading back to, well, I tell you what, Grimes gives you the name of the tavern. Yeah, whatever. The Oak Leaf Inn or something. And uh, so, Timmons, you head back, so, you get your you get mules, wagon, and all that, and then you head out of town towards yeah. that location. Does that sound like a plan? Uh, Gentra will be doing the same thing, because he'll be going to go get his horse. The same. Uh, and so the three of us will take our friend with us. Okay. And we will also let his dad know the status as we are right there, because we're all at that freaking inn. Yeah, and it's only you know ten or twelve blocks down there. So uh, you make it down there, and sure enough, there's his dad, Andrews. And of course, there's a Terry reunion. My boy, my boy. As we stuff him in my wagon and we head down to the river, you guys can both get reacquainted in there. <laughs> get in. <laughs> All right, so I will uh, fast forward two hours now. By the time you guys get down there, gather your stuff up, get the wagons loaded. Uh, Andrews and Grimes grabs their stuff, or Andrews does, and uh, Grimes says, well, you know, best of luck to you, because Grimes is actually the one that owns this hotel, the Bellflower. And he tells, what? yep, and he tells uh, Craig, he said, uh, I'll meet you in, in Cook Station in the summer. Because the plan was to wait the summer out and then maybe try to go after this gold. Of course, they haven't really talked to Samuel about it yet. So, He's busy stuffing his face. Oh, he's eating. He's eating like a madman. Um, pretty nasty sores on his ankle from where they had him chained. Um... Still smells like urine and shit. Like shit. Oh, so he's pretty much at company with Timmons. <laughs> pretty. <laughs> What's that cologne you wearing there, boy? <laughs> I, 
think I've, I think I've owned that before. Um, but I think I got a bottle of that in my back. So you guys clean him up a little bit. He gets, uh, well, his dad does, uh, get some clothes on him. And uh, no, I haven't yet. And I Take the prison jumpsuit off of him with the stripes. Let's yeah, I was just noticing that I still had all Total. Let's see. I think I need to uh, reset the chip bag. Reset the chip. Uh oh. Somebody doing too much chips. But I can't remember. That's not the right number of chips, though. Uh, Three. Yeah, well, I mean, in the bag. Jinthro said what they were oh. supposed to be last 50 week. 50 something. I think it was 40 white, 25 red, 10 blue. But I'll double check it. Well, we increased it because we do have six players. That would be the increased number. Beforehand, oh. it wasn't. Uh, yeah, it was like. It was giving you like 10 white or something like that. Yeah. It was like total of like 30 something. I don't remember. Okay, 40 white. And the other thing that. I, I think it's 40 white, 25 red. And blue, I think. 25 reds? Shit, that seems like a lot. Got a lot of reds, man. I mean, it could be 20 red. I'm trying to pull up the book now. I know it's more than 10. It'd be double on everything, so it'd be 20 red and 10 blue. You have it. Oh, so it's 20 white, 10 red, 5 blue, 35. I don't know why I came up with 40, but I came up with 40. Okay, so it is just 20 white. So it is just 20. Yeah, 20, 10, and 5. But with the extra players... I see, yeah, I, I knew that was the normal. I thought you guys said you'd increased it from there. I mean, with the I, I don't know if it if it's based off of four players or five players. It's probably based off of four players. So. so I would add five for five white for each. So ten more white, and then 15, seven. All right, so there are yeah, that's what I would do. There are thirty white, fifteen red, and eight blue. And we're going to go with He's that. He's nicer than we are. Yeah, just a little bit. I might change that later. We'll see how it plays out. But I like the fact you can sling him chips around. All right. Oh, so, I mean, right. me and John throw both have decided we should round down, whereas you said you should round up. You're nice. We, you but we, we are a little bit meaner when it comes to certain things. And I just reset the adventure cards. Which I almost turned off tonight, but I didn't. And let Why me... did I get two? Adventure cards? I uh, don't have any. I say usually I, I get two. one. I got two this time. Uh, so if you don't use it, you lose it? Oh, wait a second. I don't have yeah. one. Here, let me get Paloma in. Yeah, here. you get new ones each session. Let me uh, deal plumbers. Yep, she got a, she got one. Ooh, I want that one. Cool. Everybody should have, but I did not. I don't see mine still, so I don't know. How many chips? Yeah, uh, I got two cards for some reason, and I'm only supposed to get one. To my knowledge. Okay, now I have two chips. I can cast resurrection. You cast uh, erection, what? So I can cast resurrection. What? 
Well, yeah, but if I reset the adventure cards because Jinthro said he's only supposed to have one, he's got two. Oh, but I want to keep this two, card. Two. I'll give you my second one. You know what? Uh, we're going to go with it for the night. I see everybody's got it's chips. Probably everybody's safer got cards. to take that one away. No, I don't. I can get a zombie. You don't have a card? I don't have any cards. Showing for me, at least. Although Genthro will kill me if I raise a zombie. What? Why? I can, cast, I can cast zombie and then the first sentence of zombie goes, A mad nice scientist or Hoogan who, use, who uses it had best be sure there are no agents or rangers about. Yeah, pretty much. Although it does depend on if you're using it in our favor or not. Like, rangers specifically will recruit people that can, they think can be turned against the, the thing, and agents watch them and murder them the second they turn. So, in other words, I probably shouldn't let uh, Jinthro see me throwing a glowy card, should I? All right, um, it depends on what you're doing with it. If you... So, so you gotta understand, like, the agents in the Texas Rangers... They both are firmly aware of the supernatural and they're aware of what's happening, right? They're, they're kind of aware of the fact that they're like, there is the reckoners. Now they both will recruit people that are supernaturally inclined, but the moment you do something to step out of line, they put you down. I got you. So if I just, you know, started to attack or cast spells at, you know, random innocent civilians, that would probably be grounds for you to just kill me outright. Not probably, would be. Like, there would be no question about it, even if I had to burn the town to, to kill you. Well, I don't think you'll have to worry about that from Jeb. Like, and there, there wouldn't be any negotiation about it. That's, that's the, the, the hard part. Not very many high-level spells. But the more likely scenario is when you are found out to be one, he's going to... Keep an uh, eye on <laughs> Well, he's, he's probably going to initiate you into the agency. You'll never be an agent, but they, they will send you on horrible, horrible missions. <laughs> so I'd be a contractor. No, you'll be a puppet. <laughs> yeah, there, there is no contractor. It's a puppet. And if you don't do it, they, they pretty much murder you. <laughs> well, let's hope you guys don't have to, like, a dispute within the gang. Of course, you hardly know each other. There's, I mean, only, only the two Sue knew each other prior to this afternoon. Lunch. Yep. But they help the agency, right or wrong. And uh, there was nothing supernatural about it, so, you know. That you saw. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see anything supernatural, <laughs> but I mean, that's... It is what it is. <laughs> I got something supernatural for you. Give me some more of that beef. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> he says super nasty, not supernatural. Oh. Uh, you made fun of my lisp? No, no. Mama said I had big front teeth. <laughs> Mama said that's like that kid that had no front teeth in Stranger Things. What's it? What's his name? Christian is oh, so uh, cute. <laughs> Little curly headed oh, kid. Yeah, the the fat one. I can't think of his name at the moment. Well, I wouldn't really call him fat. Well, in comparison to the others, he was much bigger. Hey, we got to remember that Krog used to weigh 800 pounds. That's right. He's a chubby hater. <laughs> that was purely a miscalculation. <laughs> That's what the scales always say. <laughs> well, the scales were at the truck stop, though, for him. <laughs> no, it was at the scrapyard. 
so to fast forward, you guys uh, get down there. You get uh, you get Timmons wagon. Everybody checks out. Grimes gets you guys kind of packed away. He gives you, you know, a half a smoked ham, wraps it up in some burlap, and uh, some uh, couple bags of dried beans. And you know, good luck to you. Tells Craig he'll see him in the summer down at Cook Station. And off you go, and you head west, and you get out to where uh, this this tavern is. And sure enough, you guys get pretty what close What was the name of it. the tavern? Yeah, I don't know. The Oak, the oak Leaf. Oak Leaf Inn, something. Yeah, good enough. The Little Acorn. Everybody here is just little nuts. But you do walk in and um, see what are you guys actually? Which one of your characters? Did somebody here ride in the Union Army? Wouldn't matter. Nope. I think working for the railroad. I think H. G. Willikers might have been a nope. general, but he's just no. He works for the railroad. He was working for the railroad. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh, well, but everybody would be familiar with colors and stuff, and it's not hard. You guys walk in this tavern, everything gets real quiet. Every head turns, and in the dim light, you can make out some of the old gray coats and stuff from uh, from the Confederate soldiers. And eventually, Craig makes his way in, and these guys realize who this is, and. Uh, they don't really realize, but they hear, you know, who are you, what's going on, he exchanges information with them, and then there's a big drinking party that, that ensues from there. Um, you guys are probably still within St. Louis proper, close enough that it might be a little dangerous to stay here. But I'll leave that up to you. And I'm going to close that map. We're done with that prison map. How far outside of St. Louis are we? Uh, you know, maybe a mile or two. No, let's see. And, Where uh, this is at, you're probably... Uh, well, here, I've got... On this kind of weird little street map. Get a lot. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. And this is actually an 1874 map. So, uh, do we have a destination that we're heading to after we leave the city? Well, somebody had talked about maybe taking up the beer barons on escorting the uh, the train, and you don't know. You may not be wanted at all. You may have got away from there. I mean, hell, Jinthro set the place on fire with people inside. There might not be any witnesses left. Oh, there yeah, but if history serves me, wasn't there a huge fire in St. Louis? We could have been the cause of that. That was in Chicago. <laughs> Oh, that was Chicago. Miss O'Leary's cow, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this map that I shared with you, has got a couple of arrows on it. The one to the left, which would be the south, the left side of this, uh, you're looking westward uh, from here. And the arrow farthest to the south, to the west, or to the left, is the Bellflower, where you guys were at in the French Market. This one here... Uh, more in the center of the map is where you broke him out of prison and you have now made it out to about there I mean we could take them up on their offer and then swing back around uh um, summertime or springtime, whatever it is that they they asked us to meet up. Well, it it departs today if we if we go in that way. Well, it departs tomorrow. They're looking for people tonight to help guard this train against the greasy dicks. Oh, it's still the same evening, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was thinking it was morning. Yeah, we might want to go ahead and take that job if for nothing else to get out of town. Well, if that's the case, well, uh, I wouldn't have seen you guys all load things up and head and head uh, west with him. You might have, you know, hell, just yeah. Well, that's a pretty life. good idea to just get out of town for a couple of hours. 
Okay. And then we'll act like we could just came back into town. We'll we'll throw some different furs over the wagon and change your clothes and I mean we could different. also we could all also escort them to the their final destination. Make sure well, they get home so safely. We didn't actually get paid for this, right? Yeah, you did. He paid you hundred so... uh, dollars. Uh, oh. oh and thanks for reminding me. I think I can put that in inventory. Should be. Is Bellham a train station or something? What? Belton. That is it. The first shipment departs tomorrow. Oh, Bellham. That'd be Union Post Station. Notice, um... Yeah, departing from Union Station, which is... We could just show up at the Union Station and tell them we took the job. Here's Union Station. It's a pretty old building. It's still there, by the way. Um, I would have to do something with the mules in the wagon, though, if we're going to get on a train. Can we get the mules in a wagon on a train? Sure, if you want to pay for the transportation. Just... How much is the transportation? Oh, oh, it's probably going to be five dollars. Pretty much our $5. own cart, right? Yeah, five dollars a mule, but uh, you know, taking up enough space for that wagon probably cost you twenty dollars. So about thirty bucks to transport. Uh, this. But we we pretty much have the whole wagon or the whole cart to ourselves, the whole just, train car. Yeah, they'll just hook up a stock car on there, load the horses and the wagon on it, and away you go. And we can ride in it, right? If we wanted to. Can we get to the rest of the train from it? Oh yeah. Well you would you know, you'd ride in one of the coaches. Or... Right, but if we wanted to get back, if we wanted to leave equipment or weapons on the on the wagon, in the wagon we could. Yeah. yeah, and then get back to it if we wanted to. Even if we had to come across the top of the train. Well, no, you can go from door to door on these things, you know. There'd be a way to, to get into it, if you remember how them old trains were set up. All right, I'll pay the 20 gold. I got to delete 22 off. I forgot about the other couple I've For used. two mules and a wagon, it'd be 30 gold, $30. And they will right. take only, only U.S. currency or gold pieces. And for each of the horses, is five gold pieces or five dollars. Well, a gold piece is a ten dollar gold piece, so it'd be five silver dollars or five union bills. I get, I get right. fresh bank dollars. All right, so it's five dollars for the horses, you said. Yep, you can have your horses transported. I'm gonna do that. Five bucks, right? Five dollar no holla. All right, I updated my money. Uh, what about Paloma and uh, Little Beaver? What are you guys, uh, you know, you were kind of on a mission. you'd bring us up. Yeah, as this is going on, uh, Little Beaver is going to look over at Paloma and say, mm, White men are liars. They did not take us to the man you wanted to see. I think we kind of got distracted, didn't we? Oh. Are you in this conversation? <laughs> Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. <laughs> um, she's going to think for a moment, and then she's going to say, oh, Well, we did just run off with a bunch of stuff. Mm. She's yes. Like, oh, yeah, we need to have them read these papers. Maybe they're worth something. Mm. Okay. And she'll uh, nod and then turn to the group and say, uh, gift. Gift for all of you. And then she's just gonna hand him the uh, big old <laughs> briefcase that she ran off with and give it to them. <clears throat> Where did you get this? Much obliged, ma'am. Uh, 
clue. I found, uh, I found the clue. A clue. Oh? Gift. Why don't we discuss this on the train? Yeah, hey, what's in there, Jinthro? Uh, is the suitcase locked? No, it's just a, no, it's a it leather brief letter, basically. Yeah. Uh -oh. yeah um, a... documents, basically. I think it might be best if we discuss this when we're moving, rather than out in the open where we are. Uh, okay. Where are you guys and, right now? Uh, are you already at Union Station, or are you still at the Bellflower Hotel kind of planning your next move? I think uh, we... Go ahead. ahead. I was going to say, I think we're at the Bellflower uh, getting ready and okay. whatnot. Then we'll be going to the train station. Yeah. Wait, is it still evening? Is It, it is still did we ever actually? Did we ever actually go accept the job? <laughs> No, you didn't. No, that's what we need no. to do. We might want to go do that first. Well, I got the note right here. Yeah, remember uh, Bellman that uh, old man Craig shot in the, in the uh, Black Forest Tavern across the street? That's basically where you've always seen these, uh, these beer men, you know, over there scheming and conniving and selling and making deals and drinking beer and living high on the hog all day well i think we all should go bursting in there i think maybe somebody not timmons should go talk to these people <laughs> timmons be like so we just broke this guy out of prison he's over there in the cot you know he opened his mouth up too much it's one of his flaws shut up big mouth oh. Right, so I think he's gonna stay outside with the mules. I'm gonna say I have with Deb and Jim, and me too. They're all right. What are your mules' names? Uh, the Jake and Jim. Jake and okay. Jim. Okay, Jake Jim and Jim. Jim. I was uh, for some reason one of them sounded like Jeb. It's like, did he really name one of them after me? I think um, he did. Can I go ahead and just sell mine off them? Really? Sell your what? Uh, he had a, I had a mule in a cart. One of the buffalo ones. Oh yeah, you could you could yeah, find a. To take it there's a livery there. place there's right next to the hotel there. here. So. Right, how much are they going to give me for them? Uh they'll give you let's say, eighty percent of whatever they're listed for. If you uh you know bargain with them. Let's sign him up. Let's get, get, give him a bath. They ain't all putty up there. Let me hook up his foot, his boots a little bit. He can file his hoofs down. We get him all spruced up. Fluff up his mane. Here you go. Go go take him in there. That's a pretty horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the pretty horses I've ever seen. That horse has a pretty mouth. So, Here, eat, these, eat these radishes. And, uh, Little Beaver, you were talking about somebody you would come to see. Somebody about medicine for, uh, I believe for the tribe. Yeah. She wants to train and learn some medicine. Basically, yeah. Okay. And you were given a name. What's the name of the person that you, uh, you came here to meet? I'm not even, I'm not even make you spend a bait chip on this. Just uh, give me give me the info. Four one one. The. Give me the four one one. Oh, you want us to make up the name? Because sure. I don't recall us actually saying the name. That's what I like about Savage Worlds. You can just yep throw it in there. So this would be be a preview of uh, you know something you oh, might spend I did a fake ship on. The name. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I do. What? Oh uh, darn it! It was something stupid. Like stupid. <laughs> Like Dookie. Yeah. Uh, Chief Poopy Bottom. What? So, how much information are you guys telling the rest of the party, the two Indians? What do you mean? I mean, are you like announcing that you need help? Yeah, we did previously. Yeah, we. To we everybody? I kind of didn't yeah. take it that Timmons heard that for some reason. 
Well, she just said it in general. She's not necessarily a whisperer. It was. Well, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell if you guys. You know, well, she had you. walked up to uh, the guy who looked responsible in Sheriff Ike and's like, "Oh yeah, do you guys know where?" Uh, yeah, we where promised to help her find a, a doctor. Kind of person is, yeah. Now might not be the best time to go looking for a doctor. Well, thank you. Just oh, think of a doctor, like a like a baby doctor, a That's foot doctor. I, I had thought that one guy who gave us this job was the doctor. Where is the um, train going? Uh, Kansas City. It's going to Kansas, Kansas City, and really his ultimate destination would be to take to have his beer delivered all the way to Denver, Colorado. However. When you get over to talk to the people at the Black Force about the job, there's been a little setback, but it's not a setback big enough to stop them from, from making the, the journey. But it seems like uh, the rail wars that, uh, you know, the railroads have been sabotaging each other and causing problems for each other, trying to all capitalize on this westward expansion. And just west of... Come on, images, not the party sheet. Where's the... Here we go. Uh, where the hell's the uh, railroad map? Uh, so that'll show you the railroads, the existing rail lines. And uh, the Kansas City Little Rock will get you to Kansas City, but just west of there, there's been some contention at Broken Rail. And there's been a battle, and uh, the rails are torn up. So he wants to at least get to Kansas City and hopefully get the rails fixed, you know, so that they can push on through. Well, how, many, they... how, many, how many barrels are they talking about hauling? No, it's not barrels. Well, it's... Excuse me. It is barrels, but it's it's in a refrigerated box car, the first of its kind. So the whole box car is basically a big ass beer transport. There's actually six of them. There's six cars that are. Uh, Do we? To, one of them can we get some like company. handcuffs and stuff? Because uh, we're gonna have to keep H.D. Willikers occupied. That boy's gonna be trying to drink the whole damn thing. <laughs> Well, yeah. Yeah. So I might be able to give myself signing on with a little bonus here. I can help take care of all that stuff. Well, I know I machinery. Be, I know booze. I'm an expert in refrigeration. <laughs> Doc Johnson. I like it, Bunny. Doc Johnson. Nice. Makes wonderful uh, sex toys. Uh, if he'd like to sponsor us, hey, we'd be more than willing to uh, start. I thought I'd so heard, uh, Kansas City from St. Louis is how many days on the train? That's two hundred and about two hundred and ten miles. Uh, so if it travels at ten miles an hour, it's like twenty two hours. Uh no, it's gonna travel at about forty to fifty, 15, I think. About twenty to no, nah, twenty to thirty miles an hour. Because at, at, you know, at so an average pace, a horse can catch up to it, you know. Ah, good point. In full gallop. So morning will probably be arriving in Kansas City. If, you know, if we're on schedule. Yeah. Well, it, they actually tell you over there at the Black Forest that uh, the train will be ready to depart Union Station at 2 p.m. tomorrow. So you oh, so leave we it can get PM. some rest. Yep, and you also find out that uh, that Bruce, you know, this is uh, Einhuser and Bruce, um, the son-in-law Bruce is going to ride in their private coach with the train, but you know he's looking for hired guns to, you know, people who aren't afraid to do what people who are not afraid to do what is needed. Get to the chopper. That's right. Sorry. Shoot him. Shoot him in the head. Uh, but yeah, they'd happily uh, hire you guys. 
Um, it pays, I think it was $150 a piece uh, if you get all the way to uh, Denver, Colorado with the train. From there, you're on your own. Nice. All right, so what kind of supplies do we need before we to pretend to pre that we're going on this for a casualty I boat think, ride when we're actually going to be protecting something that's probably going to get robbed? I think Pomona and, <laughs> uh, you know, you guys will have an opportunity in the morning to try to seek out this doctor, too, before you leave. But my question is, you know, are you seeking medication for your tribe because they're sick? Are you, Would you... Would you be She's driven? trying to learn it, right? Trying because if you just get medicine, then it's just stopping a temporary, stopping things temporarily. It's not going to stop it from repeating. So she wants to also learn. Okay. Mm. So she wants to be taught to fish. Yeah, Lost. but I mean, she would settle for like getting a medical book and then forcing people to read a bit to her every now and again and explain to her and just teach herself. Mm. It's That's like what, a long. We're going to call it the HD Williker Hour. Get her book. Who's the got the most intelligence? <laughs> uh, oh, let's see. It's probably between Jeb and Paloma. Timmons got a four. What he was naturally born with. I've got, got a D8. D8. I got a D8 as well. D8 in chemistry. Does anybody have medicine? Yep. I got a D6 in healing. What in healing? I have healing. Doesn't it, doesn't, it, doesn't it inspire you to know that I'm the medic of the group? Oh fuck! <laughs> that scares the fuck out of me. I'm I'm thinking of you spitting flaming moonshine onto an open wound to sear it. I just see it happening. <laughs> the wild sounds, west. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. That sounds like a waste of perfectly good alcohol. He's got plenty. So yeah, we're we'll uh, in the morning. We'll look for a doctor and see if we can acquire some medicine manuals and some knowledge and maybe a med kit or something. Okay. Uh, you know, a first aid kit, well, and then uh, we'll also figure out what we need to do. Supplies and things like that. You guys want to do that? So yeah. you've got until two o'clock tomorrow. We can pass the night if you want to. I will point this out to you though that. In the night sky, as you you leave the black forest and walk back over the bellflower, you can see now a very large orange glow back to the uh, northwest of where you're at. So it looks like there's quite a fire going on back there in the city. And every now and then you'll see additional horse-drawn uh, water wagons moving as quickly as they can that direction from farther south like it's a it's a you know a 12 alarm fire or something going on but so if you guys want to do you know gather supplies or whatever and uh in the morning and then paloma needs to find doc johnson so <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> Holy shit, the house is burning. I'm trying to catch up on... I always come to the end of the night and forget to, to check out... Uh... Uh, Tim okay. was like... Jethro, okay. Hey, boy. That. Sorry, Tim what was that? The message you sent oh. me? Yeah? Yes. So, yeah, Jebediah, you know the dude. Yeah. Uh, let's see, um... Who else has sent me stuff over here? I have I need one more adventure card, by the way, Marbanya. You do? Yeah, one you only get one. You're only supposed to get one. No, I'm not. You're not? You don't know. There are ways you can get more than one, Ben. Well, Actually, I know that. It's showing she's got two for me, but uh, it's not. I only have one. Yes, I know. The mechanical malfunction one is the only one I have. That one can come in handy. I mean, if you can transfer one of my cards over to her, you can do that because, like, 
I'm only supposed to have one. Okay, so let me open up Paloma. Yeah. Uh, you... Actually, Jimthro, if you grab the card that you don't want and drag it to Paloma's portrait at the top, it'll give it to her. There How about go. we just randomize it? Because, like, roll roll a d4. Evens, you'll get the first one. Odds, you'll get the second one. Odds, second one. Nice! There's I mean, a lot I... of chaos I can get up to with the second card. Yeah, I was only supposed to have one, so I was like, yeah? I was under the impression that Destiny's Child could only be taken if you played that adventure card. I could be wrong. An edge? There's probably more than one way to get more... Well, that's just the one that I'm familiar with. There's an adventure card that says you play this card, and from from this session on till the end of the game, you know, not just this session, the entire campaign and whatnot, you get one extra adventure card, but you also take the unlucky uh, hindrance. Yeah, but if you... But, Let's see. but it also says to give you that one edge, I think it's called Destiny's Child. Yeah, the, there's no requirement except for Novice. It, it, that card gives you right. that. It just doesn't like, seem like that, that should be one that you're able to take right off the bat. That's just my opinion. Well, you're wrong, because I took it yeah. too. <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, I'm not trying to be mean, it's just yeah. unfortunately, it, it just says novice. Like, I mean, that's all it says for a pre I mean, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, because it's not exactly very clear. Uh, Jethro, throw that blue fate chip out there. there All right. Okay. I thought you were just going to delete it. Nah, just throw it out there. That way I know it. it's good enough for me. Uh, so, yeah, you've got that little information in your back pocket. Um, so you may want to have that conversation with her sooner than later because they're fixing to go find some Doc Johnson. <laughs> yep. And I'm doing some Windows management here. Um, <clears throat> Berserk Elf Weapon, welcome. I see you popped in over there. Does Berserk, do you know Savage Worlds pretty well? Looks like he's talking uh, rule set over here. Born a hero. I'm not familiar with those edges or hindrances. Wow. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah, we got an old Savage Worlds pro over here. So now I really got to mind my P's and Q's. Because I'll be the first to tell you, I don't know shit yet with this. But I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving the freedom that this rule set gives you to play. You just called her my lady? <laughs> It is a proper gentleman way to greet people. She's probably not used to that. Probably doesn't even know what it means, really. Mmm, lady. Mmm, <laughs> lady. So are you guys shopping? Is that what's going on? Uh, what do we need? Do we need anything? Uh, I think uh, Timmons, I, I'm pretty set right now. I got me a bath last night. Woohoo! I had to pay extra. All right. To <laughs> oh, very good. All right, so I say that we're gonna we're gonna fast forward then. So, uh, 
after Genthro and Pomona have this conversation. My doggo showed her butt to the camera. Come here. Doggo. Doggo's like, fuck you, man. Why are you bother me for? That's all. <laughs> oh. That's all my dog's like. You want me to get up and come over there and you don't have food? Oh, she's totally ignoring me. Ruffle oh. a bag and you know. <laughs> you ain't got nothing. You didn't have no food in your hand. Yeah, didn't you just say something Three, about them I'm walking over here. lying white people? J Rob? No, you want us if I get see what happens if I give her something? Watch. I have her full attention right now. That's terrible teasing a doggy like that. Well, she's not moving her head at all. She's just a staring at Jinthro. She's staring at whatever's in his hand. Food. See, now here's the thing. I don't tease my dog ever. So, I give her this, and even though she's on the bed and could eat it there because I wouldn't care, she runs out there to eat it. It's called respect. R-E-S-P-C-T. Okay. okay. So, did that uh, exchange work for you, Paloma, or are you still looking for a doctor in St. Louis? Uh, the exchange works for her. She'll uh, nod her head, and then she's also going to point to her horse and then say... Uh, and then ask if they have enough snacks. <clears throat> <laughs> you and your snacks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it doesn't you, matter what character she's playing. Did you guys already put, uh, you know, split that 100 gold? Well, actually, I'm going to make it 120. That way it splits evenly. Everybody gets 20 gold or $20, 20 silver dollars. Did you already add that? Well, I just added it again, if you did. Okay. So at least you can pay to have your horses boarded and stuff. All right, so if that works for you and you guys are going to head west, you take the contract uh, to escort this refrigerated beer to Kansas City and points west if you can get the rail fixed. Well, didn't HG say he used to work on the railroad? Oh, yeah. I don't know, did he? So, I think so. Uh, yeah, well, creating railroad, blowing holes in mountains, stuff like that. Spent a lot well, more time with, like, the mining companies. You probably know know more about making or building the railroad than Jeb would, so. But I think they said that the, uh, the, the, the railway was out just past Kansas City, is that correct? Is that correct, Marb? What's that? The rail's out? Uh, yeah, between Kansas City and Lawrence, Kansas. All right. They're, uh, you don't really know why, but uh, he just said there's been some disturbance on the, on the railroad out there. Uh, where were we were supposed to meet the guy for the gold? In the spring or whatever. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Uh, you said you were supposed to, yeah, in the summer, basically old man Craig said that, uh, you know, they wouldn't do anything till the summertime because it'll be too cold to be traveling north this time of year. Snow and ice will be packing in here pretty quick, which is, that's probably what you guys are heading into as you move west. Especially towards Denver. Yeah. All right, so now I should be able to do something like this. You guys will benefit from that. I'm 
want to see how that uh... there you go $12 Confederate bills $12 silver dollars and $12 in gold eagles well that really wouldn't work on the gold eagles but if you want to record your uh, currency like that set your currency up and your on your currency tab there your inventory tab or whatever all right uh, so quick question what was the starting money that we got was that the confederate or union or what yeah it's we'll just call it dollars spendable anywhere so put it put it uh, just put it as uh silver dollars because everybody will take a silver dollar or a gold eagle Okay, well, I, we, I'm asking that because there's only three slots. <laughs> well, when you distribute it, it actually labeled it all for me. Good. Well, I already had one in there for for just dollars, and then I created one for cents, and then it just added the Confederate bills. You but ain't not making no dollars. cents. What the fuck? You ain't got no cents. What are you talking about? Ah, fuck you, J. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say it like it is. All right, so. You guys head out 2 p.m. the next day? Maybe? Sounds good to me. There we go. Two PM on Wednesday the thirteenth of November eighteen seventy eight, the train begins to pull out of Union Station. By the way, Everybody give me a notice roll. <laughs> oh, finally. Jenthro, you're probably pretty used to keeping an eye out for wanted posters. And, uh, you see a couple of wanted posters that bear an uncanny resemblance to persons unknown, but the sketch might be H.G. Willikers, and the other sketch might be Timmons, and the other sketch might be Grimes, and then a fourth one might be Jeb Hexman. It's got the sheriff star and everything on this thing, but the faces are all kind of fuzzy, and all it says is persons unknown, responsible for burning down the Grace Joy Street Prison, St. Louis. And there's not one that resembles me? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty messed up, man. <laughs> yeah, all your friends in trouble like that. Look at this note. This is ridiculous. They got me looking all, like, bad, ugly and stuff. <laughs> that ain't true. Look at these pretty tops I got. We're gonna pick on an old man. Meanwhile, he gets away. The crazy Indian girl. So. Look, look, they what, made, what? they made Willikas. They made Willikas look tall. He ain't tall. Jesus. What? What the hell? They gave me a scar across the face. Just you ain't be happy. Got a scar on your face. <laughs> we take Don't him down. Yourself. <laughs> we just take him down. Demons does. He just takes them all down. Yeah. Watch over there, make sure no one's watching. I'm taking these things down. Just pulls them all down. <laughs> Rolls them up, puts them in his pocket. As a keepsake. What? If no one knows about it, they ain't going to be able to find us now. Yeah, they, people come in and look at these things all the time. You do realize that they put them in the coming to town. Maybe one day I saved us a day here. They get somebody going to come by tomorrow and go, God damn it, who didn't put that damn posters on this boat? I'm gonna find them. And so then they got some other kids. Timmons, Timmons, you, you do realize that they put these posters up in more than one place, right? Yeah, but this one special day, they're gonna come to this board, and it might buy us a couple hours. in. anyways, I can wipe my ass with them later. They're pretty steady. As you make, you're killing your, me. As you make your way on through the station, as you're talking about, you know, they put those up, and pretty soon, well, there, there's some more of them about another 100 feet down from where the others were posted. <laughs> They're like papered all over this station. But yeah. the, resemblance, ah. the resemblance is just not that good. Uh, 
but you will notice that the one that kind of looks like Absalom Grimes actually has his name underneath it. It was Jeb Timmons HG and Grimes, is that correct? Yep. Basically the four that uh that uh busted nut and whoop ass on the uh <laughs> on the sergeant. You busted a nut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Look okay, at Steph dances with Cobalt to stop by. Hello, dear. Um so yeah, so the train pulls out at 2 p.m. And uh, you guys are given a sleeping coach right by the... Uh, now, your horses and mules and wagon are stored in a stock car uh, towards the back of the train. Then you've got six refrigerated box cars. Then you've got this uh, sleeping coach that you and some other people are staying in. Then there's some seating coaches, dining coaches. There's probably about 15 cars in this train. Then right up by the uh, by the engine, of course, is the uh, private coach of the Einhuser Bruch Beer Company. And, uh, and yeah. yeah, what kind of train we own? Uh, steam, steam, steam engine, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Just getting in the... Yeah, yeah, and you know, I didn't even think about getting... That would have been a cool sound effect. But anyway... Do you need a roll for that? Need a roll for what? Uh, keep my eyes out for suspicious, <laughs> for suspicious people. Well, you make it to Kansas City sometime in the wee hours of the morning. Um, it's probably about five o'clock oh. in the morning. Train pulls into Kansas City, and you come uh, into so do what? So it was an uneventful trip. Pretty yeah, much. pretty much an uneventful trip. Um, and then they tell you, you know, stick around. They're going to take on water and uh, some other things, which you stopped to take on water, and you know, once along the way here, a little town called Herman, Missouri, where. Seemed like everybody was speaking German. It's all Deutsch uh, around the depot there. And then the train rolls on. At about 5 in the morning, you pull into Kansas City. And for 5 in the morning, the place is bustling quite a bit. Uh, the uh, oh, Sepa was the name of the guy that, uh, that took Bellman's place after Craig shot Bellman and killed him. Sepa is with you kind of head of security and he tells you guys look you can get off stretch your legs uh you know but keep you know four of the six of you here but you know if two of you want to go off at a time and do something else the train will pull out of here uh you know by 9 a.m so you got about four hours and uh and then you're headed to the railhead as far west as you can get which is uh you know, not too far, actually. So you guys kind of get out in Kansas City, and you can see there are, like, uh, paddocks of cattle everywhere in this town, all around the rail station. And it becomes pretty obvious that uh, that meat packing is uh, big business here, and you see them loading the train and stuff. And uh, about nine o'clock, the train pulls out, and you go uh, maybe ten or fifteen miles west of the city, and the train st slowly starts to come to a stop, and ends up uh, they finally come to a complete stop, and everybody kind of gets out and and uh, walks around on the prairie out here, and you can just you're in Kansas now. I mean, you can just see as far as the eye can see nothing but just grass blowing. And uh, they tell you that uh, they're going to need, you know, some of you guys to go forward and find out, you know, what's going on. They don't want to take the train too close because there's been, you know, bloodshed and stuff 
around this uh, contested railway up ahead. But they tell you it's you know about 10, 15 miles to the west here, and so you know take the wagon, take your horses, take your mules, whatever. But they've asked you to to go ahead of the train, and uh, you know if you keep going right now, that uh, you can probably get there. Um, you know you might not get there by by nightfall, but uh, you know maybe by by 9 a.m. tomorrow, you could be out at the, where this railhead's contested. Does that make any sense to anybody? Yep. All right. Yeah. Uh, so if we leave our wagon and pack mules here, probably the same travel time and everything, right? No problem with that. Yeah. Or do you guys think we should bring a pack mules and a wagon? Like well, through the plains of Kansas really City, okay. or should we walk up the tracks? I might as well walk up the tracks. I mean, we're coming back here to stay, right? Well, it might be kind of nice to have like one fast horse or something with us that we can take back if we needed to get the train going again. Then meet us halfway walking. He's like, if somebody sent the horse with us, they can ride back and get the train to come pick us up, so we don't have to walk all the way back. And you say you're intelli- you're you're smart as a D four. <laughs> I can steal the horse. What are you talking about? There's no reason to steal a horse. Oh, I'll ride on, on the train. <laughs> we can take my horse, and I'll ride back oh. if we need. To. All right. I don't know if anyone else don't feel like walking, but Timmons is all right with it. He'll leave his mules here. So he'll get some stuff out of his wagon. Stuff up his backpack and let's go. Loads up his shotgun. Yeah, I got some stuff that didn't copy over when I converted this uh, this little adventure. So I might just have to run it off a of PDF. Um. Okay. So you guys figure out what you're going to do. You're are you you're taking a wagon or not? Just taking one horse or two, or is everybody riding? Uh, Junthro is going to ride. Okay. Jeb's going to ride as well. Two riders. Little Beaver is riding. I didn't bring my mule. Also riding. Well, if everyone's riding, then we'll take Jack and. Jim. So you we'll just got to just gonna ride the mules. You're not going to hit. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, un, un, un taking that thing out of the train, getting it off the train, getting it all set back up, it's a pain in the butt. Right. Yeah. So just grab one of the mules. <laughs> yeah. Well, each of us will take a mule. You, you can ride Jax. He ain't, he ain't so bad. Jax ain't so bad. Just don't get close to Jim. He'll bite you. Let's see. Maybe I don't have the module loaded. Yeah, I do. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. All right, we're going to take a 10-minute break then and uh, come back and start rolling here. So you guys stick around. Um, we're going to take a quick 10. Turn some- and we'll be right back. 